welcome to the first episode of interviews, How Does It Feel to Be a Classical Female Musician? Where we talk about careers, challenges of being a woman in a classical music business, and general gender inequality in the same industry. My name is Romana Schimbera, and I'm a Slovenian cellist, currently finishing my second Master of Music at Hochschule für Musik Freiburg and practicant in Higher Symphony Orchestra. How does it feel to be a classical female musician? It's a series of interviews with prominent female musicians, which is made as a final project for the Frauenförder Stipendium at the Hochschule für Musik Freiburg. Even in the music field, there are still disciplines in which women are rarely found in professional practice. This scholarship is founded by Professorinnen Programm and Hochschule für Musik Freiburg is the only university of music in the German region Baden-Württemberg to be selected for it. The federal and state program for female professors promotes the rise in the number of female professors at the German universities. I'm very honored to be one of the two holders of the scholarship this year, which mission is to support the equality of women and men in its own sphere of influence. I'm very glad to introduce you my first co-speaker, a woman who left a big impact on my professional growth, a woman who I admire since a very early age. Even my first autograph from a classical concert was from her. Today with me is my ex-professor and an outstanding cellist, Monica Leskover. Hello, Monica. Hello, Romana. You are one of those special talented musicians and everyone who heard your playing knows what I'm talking about. Uh, at the age of 14, you won International Tchaikovsky for Young Musicians. With 15, you won a second prize on Antonio Yanigro competition until 32 years. You are a prize winner of the Eurovision Grand Prix Rostropovich competition, Roberto Caruana Stradivari competition, International IRD, and Fifth Adam International Chair competition in New Zealand. I would say you want everything what most young musicians can just dream of. Um, Sofia Guvedulina said once, Monica perfectly performed my preludes for solo violoncello. She's truly remarkable and simply I adore her. her. Monica is the sort of the talent that only appears by the grace of the God. Since you won um, major international competitions until the age of 20, your career started very early. As a soloist, you performed with Bavarian Radio Orchestra, Moscow and Essen Philharmonic, Kremerata Baltica, and many, many others. With conductors such as Valery Georgiou, Thomas Hegelbrock, Christoph Penderecki, and others. How was the entrance to the professional world for you as a young, successful, and attractive woman? Well, thank you, Romana, for all these nice words and uh, now you're in, you know, kind of I remember all these competitions that I did uh, well I started very early that's true and uh, I was very lucky I had a fantastic teacher here in Zagreb Dobrila Berkovic Magdalenic and uh, I remember there was one concert uh, David Geringas played uh, here in Zagreb Rococo Variations by Tchaikovsky I remember I went and we arranged a short meeting with him uh, where I played for him. I was 14 at the time. And uh, of course, with the idea that I go to study abroad with him to Lübeck. And he told to my teacher, yeah, uh, let, let's see when she wins, uh, if she wins Tchaikovsky competition and she can come to audition. So <laughs> I went to Japan and uh, I was lucky. I got first prize and that, and I went to Germany. And uh, of course, this first competition opened another competition. So it was kind of for me natural at the time. Uh, for me, it was normal to, to practice and go to competitions and to take part and to get some prize or not. Mostly it worked. And um, so that time was different time than today. And um, of course, there was it was not so much media about the competitions. It was not. Um, on the internet that everybody could follow. But uh, from every prize that I got, 
I, 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 the great thing was I got some concerts and uh, I would play these concerts that brought another concert. So it was kind of all going very natural. And uh, this was my start. Um, but then, uh, you know, you, you finish your study and you don't go do any more competitions. And then there is this period between when you're not a student anymore and you're a young profession. Then you, it changed a little bit in a way. Um, so you were actually, I mean, I can't say lucky because it was all the result of your hard work and of course also a talent. Uh, but it all came somehow naturally for you. Um, but in the previous century, the situation for professional female musicians was extremely hard. I we speak about the beginning of the century. Um, and it took us ages to be part of professional orchestras. Young generations would think this period is completely over. But just five years ago, the words of two very famous conductors Panula and Petrenko were particularly hurtful. One said that it was useless for women to conduct orchestras, and the other stressed that women had no place in the profession because they could not offer the audience anything but erotic entertainment. As female cellists, we need to face many times with unethical comments based on the way how the instrument is held and played. Have you ever personally experienced gender inequality during your career? Maybe some unethical comments or propositions? Well, uh, yeah, this question uh, brought up some memory that I tried to forget. <laughs> but uh, for us uh, women, as you said, it's, it's a long way to, to, to be, to feel equal with the, and there will always be comments on, uh, on the fact that we are women and that we play cello, which is still masculine instrument in still, uh, especially in Europe continent. Maybe in the United States, I feel it's a bit different, but here, uh, it's, of course, I, I had few um, uh, situations where, where I felt un inappropriate comments I got and uh, I can, if I can be honest and direct, I can say it was really uh, shocking because I was offered, there was a famous musician and uh, at one festival and I was offered to go to his room. And of course uh, I just uh, disappeared and, uh, and of course uh, I never played with this person again. So something like that happened and I believe to every, every woman in a less or, or worse or less worse um, situation it, it happens unfortunately it happened but were you prepared for that did anyone in, before told you that it can happen and you could mentally somehow prepare on this situation or this situation actually just came and you were afraid no, I, was, it. I was not prepared i was uh, i was young and naive and uh, you know you play with fantastic people and they're so inspiring and then you see this dark part of them and uh, of course i was not prepared i was ashamed and uh, just um, try to and what can you do yeah you just try to go on and pretend nothing happened <laughs> that's the yeah. And now when you are a bit wiser, um, let's say like that, what would you say to the young girls um, if they come to the situation like that, how to react? Well, or I think it's just important that you keep your integrity, dignity, and, uh, and uh, I mean, I think to, to say yes to a proposal like this also doesn't bring, uh, <laughs> doesn't bring much, I think, and it just makes everything worse. And uh, I would just uh, punch that guy in the face or just leave with dignity the, the situation. And uh, maybe today uh, there are more you know, better law and women are more protected, so you can, you, know, you can talk about it more open and 
I, I hope and I see it's, it's getting better for the women situation. It's getting better for sure, but talking honest about these things, I found some co-speakers which, we, which had very, very interesting stories, but at the end they decided not to, not to speak about them because they are just too hard for them. And of course I can fully understand that, but I think it's important at least a bit to open this theme for a young generation that they can be prepared that something like that unfortunately can happen because otherwise we all just are pushed to the water and need to find out how to swim. Besides being a solist, you gained also some orchestral experience. How did you feel for you as a woman to lead a group full of older, much more experienced colleagues? Um, did you ever feel any unpleasantness from them, both male and female, or maybe even conductors when you were a solist, for example? Well, I was uh, yeah, very excited when I got position in the orchestra and uh, it was um, the first time that this orchestra uh, uh, employed a woman cellist as a principal in uh, history because I mean it's different from place to place some orchestras are more open since many years some are still more traditional and they have their reasons uh, why they do like that uh, I I had I was excited and of course I was not experienced like uh, my older colleagues and uh, with the older colleagues I didn't have bad experience little uncomfortable maybe with the younger ones <laughs> male younger male colleagues I mean it was nothing uh, bad but I would feel uh, maybe a little uh, jealousy or they expect me to do something and, uh, in this particular case it was more maybe a mix of I am woman and I'm foreigner and my nationality and uh, I'm small and I'm introvert I was maybe as a character didn't fit to that group but at the end it was uh, not so bad experience actually for me good because I found uh, I, I found out that maybe not every place is for everybody you know you, you have to find your place in this uh, world and I mean, if I'm honest, when I hear your solo playing, I don't see a reason why you would be in the orchestra, because I think it would be a shame for us that we can't hear um, yeah. more of the solo playing. So um, as a listener, I'm happy that, it's, that you realize that maybe every place is not for everyone. Um, but when I spoke with my other colleagues, I realized that sometimes for a young uh, woman, it's also problematic when they come to the orchestra with the female um, colleagues um, because they are young, maybe because of their appearance, the way how they dress. Um, and yeah, they just finished studies. So maybe they are really fit with hands and everything. Did you also experience something from that or you were lucky and you didn't have any problems? I was lucky with my female uh, colleagues. No, this, this, in this way, I didn't uh, experience anything bad. But I can imagine that women can be sometimes hard to the younger colleagues and uh, like testing them or, or but um, I mean, it's a really very personal experience for everybody. But in this case, I, I didn't have any, any bad experience. That's great to hear. Um, you're not only an outstanding solist, but also a chamber musician, and as I can say from my own experience, an excellent professor. You began your pedagogic career as an assistant to the legendary David Geringas at Hochschule für Musik Hans Eisler Berlin, who had at that time one of the world's best cello classes. In 2012, you became a professor at Lugano Conservatory of Music in Switzerland and later at the Academy of Music in Zagreb, Croatia. After teaching in three different countries, how would you describe your working experiences in higher education institutions? 
Well, I remember when I started in Berlin as assistant, um, the time, I don't know if it's still like that, but my um, salary, monthly salary was less than a male salary. This was the, I remember I was very surprised by that. But um, then in Lugano, I had actually very nice, nice experience with the, with the conservatorio. They're, they were very open and, and um, very international and uh, mind and open to the world. And uh, I was very welcome there. But then my personal life went to Zagreb and uh, here I am I'm at the moment very happy and, uh, to, to be teacher here and, at the spring department. And here I didn't also personally have any, any issues like uh, with, uh, with that topic, but um, I have friends that are, um, I have very good friends, she's Korean. And uh, when she would apply for the audition, teaching position audition, she was not invited uh, until she changed. She took her husband's German surname, then she was invited. So again, there are still many, many cases and situations where <laughs> nationality and gender uh, are, are the are question. Yeah, for sure. For example, in Baden-Württemberg, where I study, um, they have a problem because more than 50% of students are female and then just around 20% of female are actually working for the university. Um, and this number is actually very shocking because if so many girls study, then it's, I don't see any reason why so little of them get the opportunity to work in the high um, education institutions. But I'm really happy that you are one of them who, for whom the quality was enough to get a position and the other things wasn't so expo expo <laughs> important. Um, in your younger days, you participated in many competitions, but nowadays you are a frequent member of the jury in different national and international competitions. Um, during my research, I realized the prize winners of major international competitions are mostly men. If you just take the Tchaikovsky competition, I speak for cello section, the result is alarming, I would say. 85.7% of first prizes were won by men. And if we take all together, first, second, and third prizes, we get a negligible lower number of 81.5% of male winners. How would you comment on this result? Why the number of male winners is so much higher? Well, my hope is that uh, that is the fact that there are more male competitors. Um, maybe there are more more male than uh, female competitors, women competitors, but. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. And uh, before, for sure, there were less uh, women. But today, I mean, look, the last Queen Elizabeth competition. I think now uh, women are more. There are just more women, female cellists in the world. And I think this is also changing now with the statistic slowly. <laughs> I mean, the Tchaikovsky still kind of stayed the same. The first two winners of Tchaikovsky competition from cello section was women and then none of them later. Um, so actually in the beginning was better, I would say, <laughs> with this particular uh, competition. But um, since you were, I mean, since, since you were teaching in three different schools and you had, um, you could communicate with a lot of other teachers and students, would you say that, that maybe also sometimes teachers are the one who sometimes don't want to send women to the competitions or you think that that is not connected at all? This, uh, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe it's about uh, 
maybe our male colleagues are more uh, in some cases more ambitious or more focused on career than some uh, women cellists they are i think it's this is more personal uh, personal choice of or character i i wouldn't say i mean my teacher always uh, for pushed me to go to competitions even when i didn't want so uh, <laughs> this, this i don't know honestly okay but have you ever witnessed the unequal treatment of women and men in competitions when you were in jury for example or you heard from someone something or you didn't had any um connection with this well you know you hear comments some some comments and uh, maybe they're important they're not important but comments like uh, oh yeah she played very beautiful but he was just better you know <laughs> stuff like that uh, you you hear sometimes but um <clears throat> I also witnesses when when the girl was just fantastic and uh, she just took first prize because she was the best. So um, uh, that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's particular. I didn't see that uh, difference in in, the, in competitions. Yeah. Okay. So until now, we were been mostly talking about challenges for women in the classical music industry. Are there any other positive experience about it? There are many, I mean, there are many positive. Uh, first, uh, this thing in the end the, that there are women are more invited to, uh, to the juries in competitions, for example. Uh, this was my positive, I'm now more invited than before. Okay, maybe I was too young before. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, there are, I don't know ex particular uh, situation, but I, I feel it's getting better. That's, I'm really glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. So you are not only an outstanding musician, but also a wonderful wife, a caring mom of your two sons. I remember you told me once, you know, Romana, when you are a musician and you want to have both career and family, you have normally two options, or you give a birth very, very young, and so you have later enough time for the career, or you beat a little bit later, uh, or you wait a little bit more. Um, so what, how is it for you to balancing family, teaching, and a lot of concerts which you have? Well, nobody said it will be easy. <laughs> And uh, well, that I remember I told you that, but now as a mom, I can say it's never good time and never bad time. They, they come when they come, kids. And so, of course, I am, it's my biggest happiness that I have my two boys and um, it's, a, it's an absolutely big challenge. I was, I mean, it's not nice to say, but I was lucky at this pandemic time because uh, we were locked and there was nothing going on. And uh, I had time for them and the, with the first one and the second one too. So for me, it was a convenient time. Uh, but now, as a, now back to uh, normality again, it's very challenging. And I'm always thinking about this sentence that women say often, I, it's everything about organization. Um, I, 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 I think it's not absolute true because uh, you cannot be great in everything all the time. <laughs> so there is always some, uh, somebody is always a victim or you sacrifice something or yourself or your kids or your uh, relationship. And it's the most challenging is to find balance and to, to you have to choose every day what is the best for everybody and um, and what I find the most challenging I mean in, now as a, as a player cello player is just you know you have to be in top form if you played Voja concerto or something or, and uh, and you need to be mental and physical in great form but it's just impossible because you're not sleeping <laughs> so you have uh, a lack of sleep brings you know you're, you, you don't feel good physically and uh, 
so to find the the, the power and and the energy to 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 be always to give the best it's not not that easy but somehow it's also so natural to have kids and to have and it's difficult that it gives you also some another power or or energy that at the end you are then able to to do things and you don't know how <laughs> so this is the mystery for me that how women how we women actually manage to do everything <laughs> i can't even imagine it at my point of life right now to do all those things together um at least not sleeping a lot that's i think it's the hardest thing um but i would like to ask you how is this practicing i can imagine that you can't practice as much as you want because you just don't have that time so was it hard at the beginning to to put the practicing to the minimum and still have the best possible result at the end of course with minimum i don't think 15 minutes or something but minimum for the quality you you need yes it's a combination of uh, you know when you have little time then you are also more focused <laughs> so you know okay i have now one and a half hour and and then you are absolutely 100 percent there and you do what you do and when you have if you don't have a choice you you have to accept it that um that is like that and uh, but uh, of course with the age it's combination of maybe you practice less but you are more experienced so and uh, the body memory and, and experience so it, it it helps of course and uh, but I, I at the beginning I was always trying to practice somewhere else so my kids because I thought it's impossible to practice with the little kids around you and uh, but now i am i am kind of uh, trying to to practice in front of them so they they get to uh, to see that their mama is working and practicing <laughs> and that for them it should be uh, normal and uh, that they should not uh, throw toys on my instrument and uh, <laughs> during their practice so I'm trying to just go like I sit and I practice and I go through and I, I ignore them for one hour. So they, I, I really I, you have to do this. Otherwise, you become there. You become victim and they, 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 un, they understand they can do what they want. So <laughs> it's it's challenging. Yeah, it's also very dangerous for my instrument. And um, but uh, slowly, you know, day by day, there are some improvement. And when I, I hope... really need to practice seriously, sorry, I, then I have to just go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. In every case, I hope you have a good insurance for your instrument. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say uh, that when you said that you just take, for example, one hour, you go through and you try to ignore your kids. Um, I think that's also a very good practice for the concert uh, when you have lack of sleep um, and maybe you have some people in the first rows who just decide to be on the phone or to cough super a lot or <laughs> the phone started to ring like the things which happen every concert even if you hope that today won't happen um, and for me for example after playing on the stage 20 years, I still have problems with that. I don't know. I, when I play and when I hear people talking, I just can't stay sober on these things. So I think kids are also very good practice for, <laughs> for trying to... To select the noises around you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so which message would you send to young girls who dream about big and bright career? How to stand up for yourself and find the courage to be what you really are in a world full of rules and not written expectations? Well, I think it's just, um, um, it's important to, to, to believe uh, that uh, and work on your, on what you do and try to do it best. So you, you have really 
uh, quality as a, I don't know in every profession and to to also be uh, as person uh, very loyal to yourself and try to find your way and if you're I, I believe really if you're good in what you do it will come out somewhere sometime it has to because quality always comes comes out and uh, and this I think the the only the only way for for young girls and people to to believe in this and to and to find your personal voice uh, in all this and um, it doesn't have to be if somebody wants super big career go for it and uh, good luck if somebody finds uh, herself in a different uh, place and enjoys it's also great and what i what I, what is also very important i think um, not to just focus on the on the work and uh, you have to find space in yourself for other things and uh, personal things and personal life and that's that's same important of course and once somebody told me uh, be careful what you wish for <laughs> because really everything i wished some somewhere in myself it it all happened so uh, so it's uh, i believe if you wish something and it's not something unrealistic it will happen so i wish good luck to to all young women to to find really great place and uh, great uh, way to to live this life i really think that you can be a motivation to all of us that everything is possible if you work enough and if you have a a goal which you want to succeed because just all the teaching um, you did it's amazing and maybe for some girls it's they think it's unrealistic to be able to get a job and then change it to another university and then change it to the third university um, and I think we really need to be aware that we can do everything. But of course, as you said, the most important is that we have a quality. Because without quality, we can't say anything because it's, then it's fair to not have a good job or something like that. But if we have a quality and if we are hardworking and we stand about um, behind what we say, I think we still have a very bright future, but sometimes with a little bit more fighting. Exactly. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Monica, for your time. I know you are really, really very busy and I'm really thankful that you took some time and share with us your, your um, life stories. Um, I hope it wasn't hard for you to open maybe some old memories um but in every case i'm sure you will help to the young girls to realize that everything is not flowers but also with a fight you can achieve everything exactly thank you romana <laughs>